Hello everyone, welcome back. We are in the sixth module and in second lecture on isoprobabilistic transformation. Today we are going to discuss a new uh, mathematical model, we call it Nataf model. Now in the previous lecture, uh, we discussed Morgenstern model where using marginal distributions and the correlation coefficient, we estimated joint distribution. So if you recall, uh, for example, if you have two dimensions, x1 and x2 and for two random variables if the marginals are given and the correlation coefficient between 1 and 2 then our main task was to find out a scalar parameter alpha that actually tells us how we can construct the joint distribution between 1 and 2. Now today we are going to discuss a different model so in this case again our main task is to find out joint distribution based on the marginals and correlation coefficient. Now in this case again, uh, two main point to be noted is that we start with the original space X and that we convert into standard normal space, which was not there in the previous uh, transformation. So in this case, uh, we'll start with original space and then we'll express the joint distribution with the help of standard normal distribution. And there will be a one-to-one mapping between original space and standard normal space. This I will explain in a minute. Then the next thing is in the standard normal space, uh, our main task is to find out correlation matrix C prime, which is obviously positive definite. Earlier case, we had the task to find out scalar uh, parameter alpha. So in this case, our task is to find out the elements of this correlation matrix C prime. So, the description of Nataf model goes like this. So, we have uh, on the left hand side the joint distribution and on the right hand side we have marginals of x1, x2 up to xn and then uh, product of that and multiplied by the expression of joint distribution in the standard normal space divided by the marginals in the standard normal space. So, we have n number of random variables in this case x1 x2 up to xn for every xi we have a ui in this case uh, please note that ui represents the standard normal uh, variable in our earlier uh, mathematical models for form we always used capital z but in some of the literatures or books they use uh, u also for standard normal variable that's the reason I uh, uh, use it here just for your information but in sometimes uh, for uniform distributions also we use uh, small u keep that in mind in this case u represents standard normal variables so for every xi we will see how we get the ui in a minute but this is the expression for Nataf transformation now, obviously, the marginal distributions are known. So, f of xi, uh, that is the PDF of the random variable xi, that is known to us. And uh, small phi is the PDF of the standard normal distribution, that is known to us. The relation between ui and xi, you can see on your screen, this is what we used earlier for equivalent normal transformation. So, for every xi, you see we have an ui, vice versa, obviously, and that is how we developed the isoprobabilistic transformation when we used equivalent normal approach. So, we use the same relation, the moment we define xi, we can also find out corresponding ui from this relation. And the models that we are going to discuss, um, some uh, numerical results, uh, they are given in the paper, you can see on your screen. For further details, you can also refer this paper. So let us continue our discussion. So we have random variables in the original space and that we transform in the standard normal space using this relation. And then in the standard normal space, the remaining task is to find out this C prime matrix. So for that, we have to find out the 
elements of this C prime matrix that we can do from the definition of correlation coefficient. So rho ij on the left hand side which is known to us from the definition of the problem on the right hand side you can see the joint distribution of xi and xj and in that expression we get from the Natoff model we have rho ij prime. So the only one unknown in this uh, entire expression is the rho ij prime on the right hand side so that we can easily find out using some numerical techniques. We can further simplify in place of xi and xj using this isoprobabilistic transformation we can write the new expression in terms of ui and uj because ultimately uh, the rho ij prime that we are going to estimate is in the standard normal space. So now in this final expression we have on the right hand side rho ij prime which is the only unknown. Now just by changing i and j we can find out the complete correlation matrix c prime in the new domain. And this can be done various ways. Uh, obviously most of these uh, uh, are numerical techniques to find out rho ij prime. And uh, the joint distribution in the standard normal space uh, we have is again known to us because for normal distribution we know the joint distribution that you can see on your screen. Now our remaining task is to find out this rho ij prime and for that different numerical techniques are available in the literature. Uh, either of them will actually give us uh, this estimate of rho ij prime. But the one given in this paper we are going to follow in this lecture and in this paper what they have done is for various values of uij they use uh, least square curve fitting to find out some empirical relation between rho ij and rho ij prime. That I am going to discuss in a minute. So the complete derivation you can see in this paper. But this is not the only way to estimate rho ij prime. There are various other ways prescribed in the literature that also you can follow. Now if we see the relation between rho ij prime and rho ij there is a very compact relation you can see on this screen and where this capital F don't get confused with uh, capital CDF this is a function of rho ij and the marginals xi and xj and obviously its value is greater than or equal to 1 that we can easily prove. Now the expression of capital F can be uh, developed when the distributions that means xi and xj uh, these distributions they have two parameters then using least square curve fitting you can develop the empirical relation very easily which are given in that paper and that we are going to use uh, in our estimations. Now there are five different categories of capital A depending upon the type of distribution that we are going to use. Now these are listed here. So the first case where we have xi is normal and xj that belong to group 1 and in that case capital F is constant. The second case where we have xi is normal and xj belong to group 2 in that case capital F is a function of delta j that is the coefficient of variation of the random variable that belongs to group 2. Third case where we have both xi and xj both of them belong to group 1 in that case f is a function of rho ij that is the correlation coefficient between i and j. If xi belongs to group 1 and xj belongs to group 2 in that case capital F is a function of rho ij and delta j and finally when both xi and xj they belong to group 2 in that case capital F is a function of rho ij delta i and delta j. Now these groups these two groups uh, were discussed uh, in our first lecture in module 6 when we uh, studied a Morgenstern model. Now obviously uh, if we have a random variable uh, beyond the 
listed random variables in group 1 and group 2, obviously we have to estimate uh, first this empirical relation before we can use it. Or otherwise, in every case, any other numerical methods also we can follow. Now, the range of coefficient of variation used in generating empirical formula in that paper is 0.1 to 0.5, which fairly covers the range that normally we use in our reliability based design. But of course, if we have a case where uh, this is beyond the uh, limit of 0.1 to 0.5, in that case, again, we have to estimate the relations first. The only thing is, uh, there is a chance of getting more errors uh, if we try to fit any empirical relation. In that case, obviously, we can go for numerical integration and estimate rho ij prime exactly. Now, the complete details are given in this paper, as I said. So, let us uh, see how uh, we can segregate uh, the expression of capital F in different groups. So, first one, obviously, when F is constant. So, the values of uh, capital F is uh, given here in this table for the different random variables listed here. For group 2, it is a function of delta j and for that again, mm, the expressions are listed here. So, in this case, uh, if we wish to estimate capital F, our first task is to find out this delta j and the moment we do that, we can estimate capital F. Similarly, for category 3, capital F is a function of rho ij and in that case, we have the expression. If we continue further, for category 4, capital F is a function of rho ij and delta j and that you can see on your screen. And then finally, for category 5, again, it's a function of rho ij, delta i and delta j and in that case, again, the empirical relations are there on your screen. All these tables are taken from this paper. These empirical relations are very handy. We can easily use it. Uh, the moment we will solve some problem, we will see it. If you go for numerical integration, that some, takes a longer time and sometimes very difficult uh, to implement in uh, reliability problems because every time you wish to adopt NATF model, you have to go for that numerical integration scheme. That's the re reason uh, this uh, empirical relations are very handy. So, if we compare this uh, not of transformation with Morgenstern, if you recall, Morgenstern model has a very uh, small range of correlation coefficient over which it can be applied. Although it covers most of the problem, but in many cases, we have uh, correlation coefficients beyond the range that we estimate in Morgenstern model. But in case of net of transformation, uh, we have a wider range. So, for example, if you have two random variables x1 and x2 and if they are marginally normal and uniform, we can estimate capital F in closed form which is 1.023 and in that case uh, using this relation between rho ij prime and rho ij and using the condition of correlation coefficient, we can estimate the range. So, in this case, the range is 0.977. Obviously, for a correlation coefficient between i and j within a range of plus minus 0.977, we can adopt this uh, nut of transformation. And uh, this table shows the range of uh, correlation over which a nut of transformation can be applied. And you can see it mostly covers the uh, domain of the random variable. Uh, and, and majority of the problems uh, we face in reliability based design they have correlation coefficient well within this range and that's the reason net of transformation is very popular uh, in uh, first order reliability analysis or uh, any other uh, mathematical models for reliability analysis that we'll see as we progress in this course. And the main advantage of our Morgenstern model is that Morgenstern model we can apply over a shorter range of correlation coefficient while this model is uh, more flexible and can be adapted for almost the complete range of random variable. Now, if we take an example, we have 
two random variables x1 and x2. x1 is normal and the sample mean and standard deviations are given while x2 is uh, exponential. And the correlation coefficient between 1 and 2 is given. Our task is to find out the joint distribution is a net of transformation. So the definition of the random variable tells us that x1 belongs to, I mean it's normal and x2 belongs to group 1. So in that case capital F is constant and it is 1.107. Now once we estimate capital F, then we can estimate rho ij prime from the relation you can see on your screen. So the estimate of rho ij prime in these cases is minus 0.2214. The moment we do that, our next task is to write down the expression of joint distribution between 1 and 2 and that's what you can see on your screen. And on the right hand side, we have three component functions that we can estimate very easily from the given definition of marginals. Now once we do that, we can plot the joint distribution, that's what you can see on your screen. The point to be noted that in the third expression for H3, the third component on the right hand side of the net of transformation, we have U1 and U2 and these U1 and U2 are related to X1 and X2 and we can easily find out for every X1 and X2, we can find out the values of U1 and U2 using isoprobabilistic transformation. Let us take a different example. In this case, X1 and X2 are uh, again given. The first one is following log normal and the second one is type 1 smallest in both the cases. Sample mean and sample standard deviations are given and the correlation coefficient rho 1 2 is 0.25. So again we wish to find out the joint distribution. So the first uh, random variable is uh, following log normal distribution. So for log normal we can estimate the parameters of the log normal distribution using the given information of sample mean and standard deviation. This we have used multiple times and you are all familiar with these expressions. So now we have the parameters of the log normal distributions and once we have it, then we can repeat the same exercise for second random variable which is type 1 smallest. So in this case also, we have two parameters and that you can see on your screen, we have estimated two parameters of the type 1 smallest distribution. Now this definition of random variables, uh, it shows that x1 belonging to group 2 and x2 belonging to group 1. So in that case, capital F will be a function of rho 1, 2 and delta 1. And the empirical relation is given here that we get from the table which I showed you earlier. So we can estimate capital F, in this case it is 1.0594 and the moment we have capital F, we can estimate rho ij prime which you can see on your screen and in this case it is 0 0.2648. Finally, we get the joint distribution between x1 and x2. Again, we split it into three component functions for numerical evaluation. So we have h1, h2 and h3, all of them their expressions are known to us along with their parameters. And for every xi again we have ui. And finally, just to verify whether our transformation is giving us the correct result or not, we compare the marginal distributions. The blue line again we get it from the original definition while the pink line we get it from the numerical integration of the joint PDF. And in this case again it matches with the original definition that ensures that our transformation is correct. Similarly for the second random variable also we can compare. In both the cases uh, the match is very close and that uh, gives us the joint PDF between x1 and x2. The moment we have joint PDF then we can continuously integrate and find out joint CDF that I can also see on your screen. So we have solved the problem completely. We have both PDF and CDF in this case obtained from Natav transformation. So effectively for two dimension, you can see 
the expression for net of transformation. We can extend this for uh, any other uh, I mean, set of random variables. If we have three, four, five, as many random variables we have, uh, we can easily extend and find out the joint distribution. Let us consider one more example. In this case, we have x1 and x2, two random variables. x1 is following log normal distributions, while x2 is normal. And in both the cases, again, we have sample mean and sample standard deviation. And the correlation coefficient in this case is 0.15. Again, our aim is to plot the net of transformation. And then we first find out the parameters of the log normal distributions that you can see on your screen. Once we do that, we can identify that x2 is normal as per definition and x1 belongs to group 2 and therefore capital F will be a function of delta 1. So this delta 1 we have already found out that is 0.4 and from that we can estimate capital F. So in this case the estimate of capital F is 1.0383 and the moment we estimate capital F we can find out rho ij prime. Rho ij is known to us that is 0.15 and rho ij prime is what we have just estimated. From that we get the estimate of rho ij prime in this case it is 0 0.1557 and then finally we uh, estimate h1 h2 h3 as you can see on your screen these are the three component function and where ui is related to xi and then finally we compare the pdf marginal pdf that we originally get from the definition and we obtain from the numerical definition in both the cases, both of them, uh, they are perfectly matching with each other and that means our transformation is correct. And then finally, we can estimate the joint PDF, what you can see on your screen. And also, the moment we have joint PDF, we can also estimate the joint CDF. So that completes the problem. Let us consider one more problem. In this case, we have again two random variables. The first one is following exponential distribution and the second one is following type 2 distribution. In both the cases, parameters are given and the correlation coefficient in this case is 0.3. So, again, our task is to find out joint distribution using not of transformation. So, from the definition, we can see x1 is belonging to group 1 and x2 is belonging to group 2. So in this case, capital F will be a function of rho 1, 2 and delta 2. For that, we first estimate delta 2, which is in this case 0 0.2505. And then the moment we estimate delta 2, we can use the empirical relation uh, given in the table that I showed you earlier. And on the right hand side of this empirical relation, you can see we have rho 1, 2 and delta 2. So you can substitute the values of rho 1, 2 and delta 2 in this expression and then finally we can estimate the capital F which is in this case 1.1394. And the moment we do that, we can find out rho ij prime which is in this case 0 0.3418. And then once we do that, uh, we again find out the expression for three component functions h1, h2, h3. And then finally, we get the joint distribution between x1 and x2. And then once we do that, we can plot the joint distribution, which you can see on your screen. You can extend it further to estimate the joint CDF, which is a simple exercise that I leave it with you. But this uh, problem tells you how to use net of transformation. And from the definition of marginals, we can find out the joint distribution. We'll see as we progress how we can use this for uh, reliability analysis. That we'll study as we progress in other modules. But for the time being, uh, from the definitions of random variables uh, and the correlation coefficient, we are now in a position to 
estimate the joint distribution. So with that, let us close our discussion on Nuttoff model. Um, we will continue our discussion on isoprobabilistic transformation. So in the next class, we will discuss another model and uh, some applications. Thank you very much.